And we're back. <sighs> Anyways, last time on five seconds ago, we were getting set up to uh, run the FreeMocap Blender add-on code in Blender over here, uh, while also connected to the VS Code debugger, which is here, here, which we are. So if I go over here and I go, I don't know, let's go over to uh, scripting tab. No, not easily. If I say print, <coughs> wow. Did it? Maybe not. Whatever. They're connected. Anyways, who cares? Um, <clears throat> and so this is the FreeMocap. This is like the official FreeMocap Blender add-on, um, and we're we're gonna in this chunk of video, I'm gonna do like a review of this code base, and um, then the next one I'll do review of AJC's branch, um, and then after that, we'll see where we're at. I might be tired. Who knows? So yeah, so this one's a much simpler guy than um, Andreas said that's kind of part of it was like just trying to simplify stuff and especially putting it into, so here's the layout. You got, you got kind of this like run as main function. This is like the main entry point. Um, and when you run it, it generates this main controller guy. I'm gonna go over to Oh no, it's a new one actually. Um, I prefer like I prefer PyCharm for like actually interacting with the code, um, but VS Code you need to run in Blender. So uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wake up! Come on, you got it. Do -do -do. Yeah, so here we are. We got this run as main as the main entry point. It generates this main controller guy who lives, where is he? Live? I guess he lives in core functions, which I don't love that, but I guess it's fine. And um, then it does this run all, and the run all is just connected to this button through the, the Blender interface is here. Um, and mine's much simpler than Andres's because I like, his has a bunch of like settings and tools and stuff like that to change different parameters for the, like the specific functions. But mine was optimized just to be like run all as a big lump. Um, so you see, I have I had other stuff when I disabled it. So right now it only just has this like clear scene, um, run all, and then this is a checker for some other stuff that happens later. Uh, and yeah, so when you do do run all. It's connected. There's something I don't love about Blender is it connects to like the name, like the string name, so you can't just bounce um, from symbol to symbol uh, here. So free mocap adapter. Uh, so it goes from somewhere. It comes from the properties, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, all the Blender interface stuff is here under the Blender interface folder. Um, do, 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 do. Right, and then the core functions are here. I kind of want to, kind of want to do this. Am I breaking things right now? Possibly. We'll see. Just because like it, it I, I kind of was looking for it there. PyCharm should have updated the. Oh, it's their absolute tracks anyway. So I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to get the the. There's, I think there's better ways to do imports than this, but what works works. <sighs> yeah, so the main controller it, uh, controls all the stuff. Um, yeah, and it got these import BPYs, which we just error because you can't see them here until you're actually running it in uh, uh, Blender itself, which is why I do the import B 
BPYs internally when they need to be, so that way it can be run outside of Blender without without having uh, errors. Uh, and I guess we don't have NumPy even in this place, but that's fine. We're not going to run the code from here, so it doesn't matter. Um, better to do, yeah. And so the run all function just chugs through each of these component steps. And I have split it up into pure Python stuff, so stuff that theoretically doesn't need Blender and therefore really shouldn't be in the Blender add-on. Um, I mean, it's fine for it to be there, but like this is the stuff I would want to pull into FreeMocap proper um, and just have it be part of our pipeline, like calculating the virtual trajectories and you know putting the data, like making sure everything's like lined up at the ground, which really should be handled by the calibration part, but that's a whole other conversation. Forcing rigid bones, I think, is actually a really important part of the post-processing pipeline, um, where you basically just go through and like, like, enforce rigid body assumptions uh, by looking at making sure that the, the distance between like, you know, the shoulder and the elbow doesn't change. Like, it's going to change because those measurements are noisy. But then you can just, yeah, you know, Andres had a nice. Um, uh, has a nice method. Had a nice method. He had it, and then I adapted it, and I think the core functionality stayed roughly the same. Most of the core functionality in here stayed roughly the same, except for some stuff that I changed. That I honestly can't remember at this point. Um, but basically, it's like you start here, and then you figure out what the median length of this segment is, just my empirically. Take the median. Like, so you find the length on each frame. You take the median of that, and assume that that's the true length. Um, and then you go through and on each frame you look at how far the elbow is from the shoulder and then if it's greater or less than that prescribed distance you just move it to where it's supposed to be and then propagate that change down to any of the child segments of that, you know, the upper arm segment or whatever. Um, it's basically like it's moving away from the actual empirical measurement of the joint centers. Um, but you're, you, this is why we're, we explicitly say that we are enforcing rigid body constraints. Like it is an assumption that we're making. It's a very common assumption in kinematic measurements. We just say, let's just assume that it's this guy, and that'll make all the math easier. And it's a fine, it's a fair enough assumption, I guess. Like we are not actually rigid bodies. We're actually quite. We have a lot of flop to ourselves, but that error is not going to be the limiting factor of this type of research yet. Someday maybe, but not now. Um, yeah, and so then all this stuff is like, is Blender specific stuff. So like creating the empties from the key, from the key point trajectories, adding the rig, um, doing some bone joint stuff. Oh, I think this is where I started trying to like save out joint angles, and I think it all kind of doesn't work, but that's fine. Um, yeah, attach a rig. Can I just run something over here? Probably. Click on, um, go over here, test data. We can do, well, I'll do test data. It's like, yeah, because I don't want to spend too much time on it. No, we'll do the full data set. Um, there's test data and there's sample data. And the test data, sample data is like a thousand frames, and the test data is just like, uh, what's the word? The, in, the slightly inaccurate linguistic term is decimated. Um, we just like chunked out, I think it's like fifth. <laughs> it's like one, so it's only 200 frames instead of 1,000, um, so it just processes faster. Um, but yeah, so you click on this folder and you select the, the, the just the data folder, the FreeMocap data folder that's been processed through uh, the most recent. <sighs> Who is it? Um, accept. And then, oh yeah, this is where I can show off the VS Code stuff. So. If I run this now, it will run through all of these things. Um, unless the, the I, could, I should double check that that move in of the main controller didn't break everything. Um, main controller, main controller. Oh, I do that internally too. Why not do that one internally? Hard to know. Um, but yeah, should be good. Uh, oh, this is, so this is PyTrap, this is a dead ID, it's not connected. This is VS Code, this is the one that's actually running from here. So if I hit this, do a bunch of stuff should happen. Yeah, it's sad uh, for that exact purpose. Why are you sad and where are you sad? Run all. 
operators. Oh. Hmm. So it's not it's not that's not importing right, um, and I'm noticing that like here I'm doing a, a relative import and it here it's doing an absolute import. So uh, actually, I'm not even gonna do that at all. I'm gonna go back over here, not the documentation. Although we do have new documentation, so go check that out. Um, as of earlier today, Pai Xiang. Um, Interface operators uh, a lot. So the operators I, I put leading underscores in front of the names um, because they often have the exact same name as like one of the core functions. Um, so I just put that there so that they you can tell visually that it's a Blender specific thing. Um, and so basically, actually, I think I think possibly in all cases, all of these operators have a matching core function somewhere. I don't know, it's like Blender's way of calling that thing. And yeah. Okay, so it didn't it didn't like that import, so I'm just gonna let PyCharm do it again, see if it does it correctly this time. I don't think it will though. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we are in this place and run all. So I wish I was one up. Da, 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 da. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I should probably just not change stuff while I'm <laughs> looking through it, just to cover myself. Yeah, let's do that actually. Roll back. Bye. You also. What are you even? Terrible idea. Terrible idea. How do I get the video? Wait a minute, do I delete you? What happened? Oh, it's because I changed the name. Oh, it's because I changed the name of the folder and it doesn't recognize the files anymore. such dangerous moves. Uh, I'm scared.
Uh, when in doubt, throw it away. That actually is pretty nice. Okay. Da 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 da. Um, get. Clone, wait, are we not replacing that? Get clone. Https. Da da da. GitHub.com. Ah, free mocap. Free mocap. Mm -hmm. And we're back. <laughs> uh, oh, BB. <clears throat> we ain't gonna change nothing. Because things that work, work. Yeah, I think it's actually already broken. That's okay. Are we doing, oh, you want to, we want to do the full one. Punch it. This could do a lot of work, you see. <sighs> yeah. So here it is. Look at him go. Look at him go. All right. Wait, are we doing test or sample? This is, this is a little fast for test. 222 frames. Yeah, this is test data. Did I tell it to do test data? Or is it in the wrong folder somewhere? Was there a bug somewhere? <sighs> that seems like a problem for some other day or some other person or who knows. And also, the center mass is screwed up. Mesh is wrong. like that. Why doesn't it? Hard to know. Okay. Yeah, so this is this is my stuff and it, it's oh well, this is my versions of the other stuff. Um no, don't mind me just going into the core functions folder to get to the main controller. Like that was always where I wanted it to be. Don't don't even don't even ask or trip for nothing. <sighs> blah blah blah. Yeah, so you got your skelly mesh, you got your center of mass mesh. Um, I was making trails at some point, but then it's like I just got annoyed with it, so I stopped. And the video setting scenes. Um, there is functionality to create an output video, which we've been needing for quite some time, but also didn't quite get it to the point where I was ready to share globally. And then blah blah blah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so on my side of the fence, the focus was on getting everything uh, sort of like chopped up into little pieces so that the, the file directory is sort of informative and having this nice like folder structure or whatever. Um, separating out interface aspects of it from the functional aspects of it. Um, you know, this is all like all these core functions have like different like there's like different tasks like this is all the stuff associated with empties this is all the fbx import which doesn't work in the videos this is materials this is goes deals with meshes so it's sort of like you know the folder structure itself um is sort of split up in the directory structure as well which just makes it kind of easier to manage complexity the thing gets bigger there's also this data folder um, for like like constraint like sort of definitions and model like sort of like it's this kind of stuff like big old honking dictionaries that tell you how to make the who's it um, then there's this sort of oh yeah it's been, then there's like a free mocap data guy in here which mostly is centered around so there's these data classes um, right yeah yeah and this defines like 
the relevant data. So there's like body, right hand, left hand, face, um, tells you where the source is from, which is you're gonna need that soon, which is good. Um, there's other stuff, which is like this is this is intended to be stuff that's not body, hand, or face. Uh, in this world, that is the center of mass, but it could eventually later be like deep lab cut model, like things that are not like skeletons. <sighs> And yeah, and it's composed of like, you know, other components and just like, you know, yeah, we're calling like the body, hands, and face, we're calling those components of the data. Um, it's got like, you know, constructors and validators and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, so yeah, you got this kind of constructor method. So from a, from a premocap data dot from data path, you just give it the data path and type original, I'm not, I think that's just a tag. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, where's type coming in? According path, data path, data paths. Oh, this is like the sub data, like where the stuff lives in the directory. Um, what's type? Type is a quarg. So then we also get, and then this bounces up here to this quarg. Yeah, and I guess it just feeds the quargs in. So, quargs are keyword arguments. And I think, yeah, like they get, I think it's getting tagged. I can't remember why this is there. It's, it gets tagged, like the, one of the things that the FreeMoCap data handler does, which I, I guess I, that's up here in core functionality, is that right? Oh no. Oh, it's a separate guy. I put them, that, that makes sense, I guess. So there's a lot of stuff that happens in this FreeMoCap data handler. Um, for example, like every time there's a new processing stage, it tags it. It saves a copy of itself and then tags what's going on there. Um, Da, 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 da. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff happening here. Um, this is a pretty, it's a it's a big honking guy. It needs to be broken up for sure. Um, but it does a lot of useful stuff, and I think it's gonna be the way we're gonna organize things going forward. Um, it does have some Blender specific stuff in here that's gonna need to be excised before it gets pulled into mainframe OCAP. Like empties is not stuff, and that's probably. That might be the way that it gets broken up. I think if we, if we, it might be that if, let's see, what, what do we got here? I guess we're still doing this code review. Right click, uh, folding, uh, collapse, all. There we go. Uh, and yes, yeah, so we got this in it, and then we got this. So, yeah, so this can also be built from a recording path, and I think it, it builds a free mocap data object within itself. Um, yeah, so it's a free mocap data that we saw before, and then, you know, and then it builds itself by setting the free mocap data and then returning itself. This is called a class method. <coughs> and all these properties, so you can just like pull properties out, center mass trajectory, by trajectory, right hand, left hand, face, da 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 da, all these good guys. Um, if it is underscore XYZ, that means that it's gonna give you a NumPy array, I believe, which we should, should, I said I wasn't going to change anything. Um, here we are. Um, type hinting is, is a safe thing to do. But just naming wise, if, the, if it is underscore XYZ, that means it's a NumPy array. Um, it's going to be roughly of the shape, frame, trajectory name, XYZ. Yeah, see? Body, frame, name, XYZ. All these should be type ending. What are you doing? Uh, NP dot dot NP array. 
NP dot non-dimensional array. Yeah, and that this naming convention of like if it's a NumPy array, then it, the suffix tells you the the dimensions. Um, so the first dimension is frame number. The second dimension is sort of trajectory index, I guess. Um, and then the last one is X Y Z. And the the trajectory index means that there with a NumPy array there has to be an associated list of names that has the same order that the uh, markers are in trajectories are in the NumPy array, and without that, it's not good. So, advantages of NumPy arrays is that they're way faster, like so much faster than dictionaries or, like, God forbid, pandas arrays, um, data frames. Um, but then they have you have to have like it's like you have to index into them using a, a string list or whatever, whatever. Oh, there's so many. I could probably I'm worried about line count. I always am. Um, I could probably get a lot of this down um, just by uh, like getting these properties out of here. I don't, I don't quite know how to like pull that out to a different part. Like, there's probably a trick to do it. Mm -mm, Alt F11. There it is. Grab it. Control C. Go over here. What's up, Skelly? Yoink. Uh, oh, this. Main branch doesn't pull attachments yet. We'll talk to main Skelly though. Hank, blink. Uh, can you tell me a way to extract all the property property stuff from this class definition to get the overall line eh, count eh, to to make it makes the main class definition smaller. Don't do it, just tell me the options for how I could do it. I don't want it to give me like a bunch of text right now. I'm just curious. Mixin, ooh, mixin. Create a separate mixin class that defines the properties and have inherent composition. Outsource the properties to a separate class and include an instance of that free mockup data handler as a member. Access the properties through this member. Descriptors. Ooh. Implement custom descriptors or property factories to programmatically create the properties reducing the repetitive code. Decorators to wrap and add properties outside. <sighs> Pros and cons of each. What's a mixin? Mixin. How would I outsource? What's best practices? I need to think about that. Okay, anymore. Bye. <laughs> um. I guess, yeah, I guess it's, yeah, okay. So uh, we are apparently adding type hints right now. I think that's actually a good move. Mixin is a class that produces method to other classes through multiple inheritance without being a standalone class itself. Yeah, we're doing type hints. This seems like the right move. Um, this is trajectory names. It's plural, which means that it's going to be a list of, of strings. Um, this is not like I have told it that it will be. Like, that's just my naming convention. Ooh, trajectory names. Yeah, that's going to be a list of strings. That could, if it was like trajectories, it's, it would be a dictionary. Uh, string. Oh, I'm just returning stuff from the data guy. Hmm. List of list of list of strings? No, shouldn't be. Okay, and it should it would be yelling at me if I said like, int, right? 
Yeah, nice. Good job. know this by now. I've given you all of the statistics you need. Why have is it turned off? No, it's just giving me stuff. Machine. I demand of you. Do my menial labor for me. Tools. Is it not on? It was just doing it, wasn't it? Uh, control all tests. Login. Copilot. Install. Huh. Could have sworn. Could have sworn. Restart. <laughs> Just don't, don't, don't make, don't make it weird. Just so you know, Narc, don't like you. It's just useful to me. Ah, oh, okay. Face names. Where? Where is this? Is this shut? You misunderstood our relationship. My dude. Now, and now, in the other question is, do I need all these properties? Are they used? And I don't know if, like I know in JavaScript land it would tell me, or TypeScript land at least, it would, with ESLint and Prettier, it would like yell at me if they were like unused. Such as will be done. Ooh, you don't know that. High dimensions. This feels bad to me. I don't like this because you're like you're you're returning a key. In a dictionary, so there's no you can't do type hinting really properly here. Um, it is used over here. It's fine, but I'm not going to type hint it because I I can't. I don't know. Like I can't confirm that that will happen. So um, this will return an int. Know that. Good job. Um, will this return anything? No. Just does something. Uh, I guess I can. Yeah, I guess while we're doing it, the machine knows. Yeah, so add trajectory is called a loop by add trajectories. See, you see, you see, uh, you see what I did there. Get trajectory is going to return a union, so it's that's an or, either a a dictionary of string numpy arrays or a dictionary of string of dictionary of strings I guess if it's defining multiple components it's good yeah so it's like body and body stuff right hand and right hand stuff so it's not like if it's just one it's just a dictionary um, if yeah, otherwise it's a dictionary of dictionaries I guess And yeah, you sad. It's okay. It's okay. It's a little sad. It's like formatting sad. E25 continuation line with the same indexes. It's okay, buddy. Can't fix that, can you? It's rough, dude. It's hard for you. Together at last. I don't know if... Because I just got... I was like, in Skelly Bot, this, <laughs> this guy on the... Yeah, so it's it's opposite. This, <laughs> um, Skellybot's uh, 
TypeScript, JavaScript, TypeScript, Nest.js, fancy boy stuff that Endurance taught me how to do. Um, but so I'm like thinking, I'm like, oh, Python's like this. Why are you sad? Hmm. So, yeah, so this is a place where, like, I think I must have, def oh, yeah, I have this defined add trajectory, add trajectory, component type. Yeah, so I have these defined as literals, so they, it, it must, it will throw an error, I think, no, it'll throw a type, well, it'll throw a type hint error um, if it's not one of these, but I guess the way that I'm calling it here, it's not, it's, doesn't have the, Ability, I guess, to be literal, or it's not type hinted properly to that. If not, is instance, then do that. It's like, yeah, it's like, is it a list or not? Eh, it's fine. So this is like a type hint warning, um, which is, again, it's like a string string comparison that I can't confirm, I guess, at this point. Um, I could probably do it by, like, setting these to be, like, those component type things, but I don't want to mess with that right now. Uh, get trajectory, get trajectory, yeah. Do 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 do. It's too much. There's too much. I should make like a trajectory handler, I guess, um, because I'm just I'm looking like like I don't like my code to be more than like a hundred ish lines per file. It's just like a rule. Like if it, like it's it's fine if it gets over, but if it's over a hundred, I'm just like that's too big. This is pushing 600 lines, so I'm just kind of like looking through it, uh, figuring out what can be like pulled out, and I'm, I'm noticing that a lot of the work that's happening in here is related to these. So, get trajectory, add trajectory, add trajectory. So yeah, so if, oh yeah, dang. Um, uh, sloppy. <sighs> Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, so fully 200 lines, 213 to like 397 is devoted to wrangling trajectories, adding, adding, getting, setting. So if I pulled that out into a trajectory manager, then now this 600 line chunk of code is now only 400 lines. So, and then all these properties are probably most of the rest of that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so then any, anytime you need to call one of these functions, instead of calling that function, you just call trajectory manager dot that function. And you define the trajectory manager in the initialization of the guy. I already have something kind of like that for this transformer, uh, which applies transforms to the data. Powapati. Yeah, property. I like the idea of a mix in. I've seen those before. I kinda wanna learn what those are. Um, so what's uh <laughs> WDL? Um teach me teach me what a mix in is using simple examples. X slash chat. He pops it up next door. Um. Oh, neat. Oh, neat. Okay, so it just dumps its method straight in there. Properties, properties, yeah, how much is done for properties? So if 33 getters and setters, you see. Oh. 33, yeah, 33 to 200 is all properties. So, yeah. So this 600 line blob of code, 200 of it is just properties, getting and setting, 200 of which is trajectory wrangling. 
And then the rest of it is looks like yeah, get body dimensions. This uh, just this is one of those things that's like I look at that, it's just like it's like ah uh, you just that's that's that is where the metal will fatigue first. <laughs> uh Christ. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Um, and then it's like a but. So the uh, the leading underscore here again means private. In Python, that's not enforced, but it is uh, recommended. I'm going to make these type hints a little more powerful. This is, so I, lo I look at stuff like that, and it's like, okay, yeah, the bot definitely made that code because I I use full the big the big type hints that can instead of just saying it's a dict, it can say that it's a dict. Um, that will be string. Partially true. This won't be like that. This will be other will be a list of It's not mad about it. I feel like it should be though. So it's gonna be either Ugh. Union int. Yeah, so that's what it should be. Maybe it's not smart enough to notice that that's what it is. And that's also it's a little ugly in the type hinting, but like, it's fine. Um, any of these, this is kind of like one of the reasons why these like raw dictionary methods are like a little like, ooh because it, it just makes the type hinting harder because it's like there's stuff on the inside. Like if this was a class, you wouldn't have that issue. But then it's like, well, you want to make a whole class just to make that. Validate frame counts. Um, make sure they're all equal. Yeah, so validation stuff like that. This is kind of, this feels like, you know, feel like a right move. Mark processing stage is a good one. Um, I should move these privates below the publics, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, control shift down. Wah. Neat. Is there another one? Control shift down, down, down. It's one of the rules you see. Private's at the bottom. Down, down, down. I'll bet some of these are actually secretly private. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. Down, down. And then this sort of like. I'll bet, I'll bet a lot of these aren't actually accessed. <sighs> Yeah, and then when you call, when you when you if you print the female cat data handler, it calls the string thing, which returns the string version of the female cat data object, which has its own definition of a string, presumably down here, uh, and it returns a stringified form of female cat data stats, which is apparently some other class that I done made that pulls out um, statistics. statistics. <laughs> Calculate stats. Who's that doing? Hmm. Did I write that? This also. This looks like this looks like bot code. Um, it, either bot code or um, copilot code. Because it's like it's it's the whole thing. Like any anything X Y Z and like this kind of stuff. Like the bot's super good at that kind of thing because it's just it's very much repeating the pattern, and this is also where you get to take advantage of being really fastidious about your data types and your and your whatnots and your blah blah blahs because like it's like oh data is going to come in, uh, type hint numpy dot n numpy 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 np dot nd hooray, and it's like it's like these are numbers they're like it doesn't matter what else is going on there, like it's going to be a numpy array. Um, oof, I should. Um, hmm. Calculate stats. Uh, if uh, yeah, because this code is um, yeah. Uh, I said I wasn't going to change anything, but. Specific, you see. Um, 
yeah, so it's just kind of like I could see myself either either I asked a bot to produce something for it, or I just like wrote the first part like mean X and then just like hit enter, like hit tab uh, on the, the completions. Because once you know that 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 once you know that the functions you the human or hypothetically botto the bot um, with the context that we are in Python and that we are in a function called calculate stats and I write the first line which is mean underscore x equals np dot nan mean data and then the first one if they decide blah 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 it becomes pretty stinking obvious that the next line is probably going to be that same thing for for y and then for z and then after that well what else are you going to do you know like grab these things so I might have prompt I like, like time the pump or writing that and then like you know who knows um Anyways, this particular the end of this particular rabbit hole is that if you just print, um, whenever you print the free mocap data handler, it prints you stats about the internal data, um, which is nice because it just you know, it's just kind of like yeah, it's helpful. This is one of those cases, like, I always go back and forth about the whole assume context and naming thing. And so I named this just handler because you should be able to, like, tell from the folder that it's a female cat data handler. But, like, I kind of, it's like, I don't like it up here because it just says handler. And it's like, that just, it feels like someone else's boilerplate code. code. So it's just, it's the traditional Python style is assume context when you, um, but. I just personally. It's always a struggle in my head to be like, everything should be standalone. It's like, no, assume context. And like those things are in fact are in conflict with each other. Doop-a-dee-boop-boop-a-dee-dee-boo. So here's all my stinking properties. And here's all my trajectory stuff. Yeah, mark processing stage. So basically, anytime you manipulate the data, um, you can just call this and say, yeah, what the name of the, of the manipulation you just did. So yeah, like raw, reoriented, like smooth, filtered, whatever. Uh, any metadata that might have been generated from it. So like, this is where the thing from before of like, it's looking for like, like segment lengths, assuming that some processing has happened, that's, that it's been put into the metadata for that processor, I guess. Oh no, it's updating the global metadata. Um, that, like, that, that's just associated with this. Uh, really, if we wanted to nail that down, we should have, we should like name the processing stages. Um, yeah, but it's nice. And then you can, yeah, and so, and it then just like, it deep copies a copy of the data, like that, again, that little data, internal data class uh, converts it to a dictionary, which, how do we do that? Because I thought there was a bunch of NumPy arrays in there. Do I overwrite the dictionary call? Oh, wait, no, different guy. Uh, control B. Hello. Hello. I also have to, like, like, so with free mocap, it's free motion capture, so we often write it with that kind of, like, like, weird portmanteau-y, like, you know, capital F underscore, like, you know, capital FMC and then everything else is underscore. Um, but, like, in Python land, like, there's, like, a conflict between that naming schema and then, like, the, the edict that, like, classes should be Pascal keys. So, it's like, th this doesn't seem, this doesn't feel right to me because it's, like, it should only be, there's only two words here, free mocap and data. And the rule is, is that a capital letter denotes a new word. Um, so you kind of like, like normally I, I get like writing free mocap like this is like not how we tend to write it, although it's kind of starting to grow on me, but it's just one of these places where it's like, okay, follow the rules. <sighs> what was the question? It was how do we, what's the dict doing? How are we calling dict? I'll bet I overwrote the dict call because I'm, no, I didn't. I bet you have an overwritten dict call, don't you? No? Is 
Is it working then? <laughs> I wonder what happens. I don't know. Because I've never actually used this storage thing. Um, and I'm just, I don't know what happens if you call dict on something that has NumPy arrays in it. If it, if it doesn't get the data in there, it'd be easy to fix, so whatever. Get processing state, add metadata, yes, add the metadata thing. This is prop almost certain, it's gotta be a, yeah. So that is private. But this is too. <laughs> That's never used at all. Uh, whatever. Extract data from empty. So this is this is this is Blender stuff. So really, this shouldn't be in here at all. Um, and this is about slurping the data out of empties that are in the scene. Um, when do I use that? Do I not use that? No, I do. I use it in the saved disk operator. Which does that even make it into the guy? I do want that. I think that's a button that currently might not be activated, but I do want it to be. I, I do want it to exist because uh, you want to be able to like do manipulations of the of the empties and the data in the Blender scene, and then slurp that out to disk. So you need to have some functionality to be able to pull the data out of the empties after the empties have been manipulated. But I don't think it it, it, it doesn't. It shouldn't live in here. I think the vast majority of the FremoCap data handler class is gonna get pulled into FremoCap proper, um, because these like like sort of geometric transformations that we're doing here, uh, generally like if it doesn't have to happen in Blender, I don't want it to happen in Blender. I want it to happen in pure Python land, because you know if we want to make a standalone add-on that can do these manipulations automatically in Blender, we can just do that on our own. It's kind of like Again, I'm like thinking about. I'm always thinking about like what is the most complete sort of end, you know, start to finish pipeline that we can make in Blender, you know, using as generic a tools as possible. Previously, it was always pure Python, but now my heart has been opened to web dev. Um, but I think still most of the working code is going to be in Python, um, and so we want to sort of like make as complete of a transformation from like from photon to skeleton as we can. Uh, without like tying ourselves to like specific tooling, um, and so so this extract data from empties, as far as I can tell, is the only Blender specific stuff. Uh, the only Blender specific um, work that's happening in here. Um, so this can be pulled out when it gets when when we when when this gets pulled into FreeMoCap proper, this can be pulled out into the add-on. So that way you can have that functionality, and the add-on might still need to have this handler. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right, it's over here in core functionality. Of course it is. Oh, so I wanted to see how the handler is used. Handler is all over the main controller. Oh yeah, by the way, if it wasn't clear, um, this is view, this is controller, and these are models. I guess this is model too. Kind of. I don't... There's like sub MVCs, but the intention was to sort of pull them apart by like interface is the view, core functionality is the controller, data models is the data and then this I think was originally in data models but it became such a big like it's such a central component that I pulled it up a level so it's more obvious where it is because it is it is the arguably like the star of the show um, who's the red who said oh it's the blender guys blender guys oh yeah, and so you know it does a pretty good job. It's got these, you know, like some of the there's something going on with the rigid bodies that doesn't happen right, and like something in the hand that gets screwed up, and like these face bones are also screwy. There's some length thing that's happening in here. Um, the hands are definitely screwed up. <clears throat> um, the feet don't go all the way down. 
uh, if I run another one, like, I think what happened here? Sometimes, like, something gets screwed up and, like, the skelly mesh just, like, exploded apart under the earth. Um, so, you know, not a perfect solution, but it does the job. It's getting there, you know, better than what's, you know, with the rules, uh, better than it's ever been and worse than it'll ever be. Better than it's ever been and worse than it'll ever be. Also, it creates this, like, guy here who doesn't need to be here, so. <clears throat> I'm seeing double. Four skellies. Anybody? 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 That's a bit of a deep cut. <laughs> what a good skeleton. Look at him go. You never really know which thing you record is going to be the one that follows you around. <laughs> like, I did this demo in class just to, like, show it off. Um, it just became, like, the demo. Because it's, like, it's short, it's sweet, it's a good recording, the quality's good, and I'm doing these tasks that you can sort of, like, tell. It's designed to sort of, like, help you, like, what are, what's the word? Auto-validating. Let's grab... Er, where you want to be? No. Uh, kite. You need to, friend. You don't need to be. Ah, you're fine. Get you. Get you out. Uh, doink. Uh... Control C, Control V. Ooh. No, don't do that. Ah, Control D. Now I've got this guy. No, so it's the same guy with a little one underscore here. And constraints. And then don't do the Z part. Mesh though. Okay, grab you though. You're the actual guy, but you're also a copy of the guy. Cool. I'm doing this wrong. Control A. Make a mesh. Make a, a monkey. And scale it to 0 0.02 of regular monkey. That monkey is too small. Scale it to ten times such monkey. That's too many. Scale it to five times. Three times. Three times of monkey. And then I'm going to add a constraint and I'm going to say copy the location of the center of mass. Don't have to yell. Center of mass. Not a copy. Don't need them. And then it's going to be like all of them? Like, nah, my dude. Oh, it's over there. <laughs> oh, oh, that's how rude. I am following the copy. I am sorry. But on Z, you see. So now we have the vertical projection onto the ground plane. And as you can see, when he's standing on one foot, where else could that vertical projection be but under the foot? Or at least under the approximation of the foot that we can infer from the crappy ass foot model that media pipe gives us. <sighs> yeah, look at him go. And then he's going to bounce around and think, oh, well, oh look at that. Ha <laughs> ha. You see that? Clinical relevance. Huh? Huh? Where you got to steps on the monkeys to have the balance. Don't you understand? Don't you see how skeletons do? This is how you stand up, is you have this little pastel 
tennis ball in your pelvis the most, as we all know, phylogenically distinct osteological structure in the animal kingdom is the human pelvis. And this Easter egg that lives inside of it keeps us upright by firing monkeys into the floor. And the monkeys pin our foot to the ground like nails. So, if anybody ever asks, that's how balance works. And then also sometimes you jump. <laughs> and when you jump, it looks like a little squiggle. Ah, oh, da da da, where's that, that guy, yeah. Normalize, look, look. Guess where the jump happens. <laughs> oh, can I do the, yeah. yeah, so look, here I am. So we got our XYZ. I wish that the colors weren't like that, but it's fine. Like, there's, there's way more key points than animators use, so it's like, it's overwhelming it. Um, and this was even decimated, so it's only five times uh, pentamated. Pentamated? Decimal? Pent pentamal? No, decimated. Pentamated. <sighs> it's s s not squished. Resampled? Sample. Um, yeah, so here I am. Look at me go. Off screen, so it's all jarbled because I'm partially off screen. And it catches up. I don't have two of the other ones. Just hands. Oh no. <laughs> oh, hi. We're back. I should get the screencast keys for here, too, but whatever. Center of this, center of this. Noticing if I click the ball, there is no trajectory data because the ball is copying the empty trajectory, the mesh. This, you have no movement. Your movement is always zero relative to your parent, who is this guy. And you can see. Here I am, I'm moving around. Oh no, what does this dip could mean? Could it mean that I am to dip my body? Ho ho! What does this mean? I'm probably, okay, so X and Y both are here, and then they're gonna go somewhere else. That means I'm gonna move my body in the negative X, negative Y direction, which is gonna be, so positive, it's gonna be this way, I guess? That is, let's, let's find out. Whoa! Never saw it coming. And then now I'm going to go positive Y, so I'm just going to take a step back. Yoink! Oh. No, that was... Oh, sorry, that's X. Right. Oh, that's not bad. You can only see it through. I wish it was possible to, like, not view the markers. Oh, it's not markers. Key points. <sighs> show me show me handles. Hmm? Oh, that helps. That's actually yeah, look, yeah. Only selected keyframe handles. Show handle show seconds. I do want that. Nah, I also want that. No, I don't want that. <sighs> Alright, it's fine. Good enough. Uh, so then I take, yeah, so it's positive X, so it's to the, that way. There I go. See, it's way easier to get a prediction right the second time you look at it. <laughs> then I stand here. I think it's, this is when I'm, I'm doing, this is before we had, like, well, I guess it's a, it's a one-person recording, so I was just doing, make sure that it had an A pose. And I think this is, I think this is where it detects the good, clean frame. And you can see, I, like, I couldn't hold still, like, moving my hands around. I was nervous. I was performing, you see. There you go here, and then I'm gonna do another little dip. Oh yeah, look at me go. A little dip, a little dip. And then I could do this all day. I have. And now the moment of truth.
30 seconds. Uh, 30 frames, plus or minus, on the who's it, get the what's it, do the wow's it, uh, display, not the keyframes, yes, the red, not the red. Uh, Magent. Okay. This is why, like, I wish that we had the actual um, sample data, so it would have the higher frame rates, but it's fine. Um, I should just look forward. Uh, four, zero, forward, 30, because 30, oh, that's why, because it, it's, because it's decimated. Um, update, 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 update all this. Goodbye. Calculate. Around frame, selected scene range, that range, okay. Oh, I see. Right, okay. So then I go here, and then very quickly, so, uh, again, it's like, I don't know how many, because of the frame, it doesn't, I don't know the frame rate. Let's just basically just say I don't know the frame rate. Um, it's going to be a trail, not a, whatever the opposite of trail is. Yeah, there you go. So here I am, I dip, sort of bend my knees, like not a ton. Um, but I also throw my arms back because they're going to drive up. And then as I start lifting off, huh, there's a mismatch between these frames. Maybe. It's hard to tell. Because the arms aren't right, but they're also not tracking well because I am moving them very fast so they're blurring. So. Hard to tell. Do -do -do. But this does seem this seems forward. Like I'm off the ground here and here I'm not. I'm not super shocked by that. Cause the it's I, there's gonna be some weirdness because of the the way the data was chunked and yeah, let's do its job, but Yeah, that's weird. It's off. Oh, it's off by one. Classic. Pretend it's not though. So I load up and then drive up both of my arms and my legs, breaking contact with the ground, flying under the force of my own momentum, a nice ballistic trajectory, and then come down and absorb, push into the ground. And here I am, once again, happy, healthy human on the floor, like I should be. Okay, uh, that wasn't actually what I was supposed to be doing. I was supposed to be doing a code repeat, but I saw a skeleton and I got distracted. Um, okay, anyways, that was a uh, code review and also looking at skeletons. <laughs> also, intro to center of mass. Uh, save the changes? Nah, it's not real. Uh, I'm gonna throw this up on the internet. Um, I guess the content topic of this was, or I had that false start, and then I have this. I don't know if I'll post the false start. There's nothing interesting happening there. No, it's like good debugging. <clears throat> Trick is that I just don't do any work when I upload it because it's, there's it's, I don't need any more mental steps in my life. Just like. <laughs> This is free labor. You get what I give you when I give it to you. Um, oh, which reminds me, I need to do that review. 